Thomas, you're on. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, this is Thomas uh, Dalbert. I uh, quickly re uh, showing you how, how this model that uh, Kimon was showing uh, is, is linked to the Revit file and to the uh, Nano's work files. Uh, so we, we got the same floor plan here, and uh, this this building scheme from this Revit model. Uh, this is the Revit model that uh, <coughs> is, is publicly available on the Building Smart Alliance uh, website. It has uh, this. We, what we did here, and what what the file is actually uploaded. Let me show you here. If you go to the uh, reports and you look at the attachments, you can see the Revit uh, uh, attachments here. These are the two files, the clinic Navis works and the uh, Revit combined uh, architectural MEP file. So you can download those. Uh, at the star page when you log in, you can download the plugins that are needed uh, to connect. Uh, <coughs> and uh, so this is a com combination, a combined model, uh, the Revit model and the MEP uh, unbound elements. Uh, you can see here this chiller. We're going to look at that chiller now. Uh, also in the uh, in the Numa system, it sits in this space down here. Uh, you can see the chiller here. Uh, and look at the details of this chiller. Uh, there's information about it. Uh, it could could have a, uh, additional attributes for the specific uh, for the specific instance of a chiller, but you can also have type information about the chiller. This is all information that came from Kobe. When you click on that, it, it specifies where uh, that component is in the building. Uh, there is only one of those chillers. Uh, you can see the attributes here, this uh, list of attributes that came from the Kobe uh, file. <coughs> and uh, you can see down here uh, documents linked to it. Uh, you can click on that, and it opens up uh, <coughs> the PDF uh, with, with information about that. Uh, chiller. Um, the PDF is probably a little bit long, a good size, so I'm going to come back with it right after. Uh, <coughs> so you can you can see that information. You can modify it here, of course. You can modify it in the building. You can click on any of these uh, attributes and, and make changes. You can uh, add additional documents. Yeah. And uh, in the if you get the file, the Navisworks file uh, is, is this one here. If you open that Navisworks, uh, the uh, NWF uh, file, uh, you get to this model. This is directly coming from uh, from the Revit file. You get viewpoint. There's cer certain viewpoint saved here, so you can quickly go to the uh, first floor uh, at the floor level. Uh, with the, you can select the door. Uh, Little doors or, or cabinets, uh, sinks, things like that. Or you can go to the mechanical equipment. There are two views of specific rooms. This is a one single room with a window and uh, diffusers, supply and return diffusers. Uh, uh, you can uh, look at the data there. Uh, <clears throat> if you uh, up here in the Anuma uh, tab here, we get two, two different uh, parts. We have the Anuma login. Um, you can log in with, with, uh, with your credentials, the top uh, username and password, and then the bottom is the system ID and the building ID is this is what you see here. Um, the medical model here, medical dental clinic is uh, the system is one four one and the building number is three three seven two. So that's one four one and three three seven two. <clears throat> uh, so I'm connecting now uh, and entering the login, and then I, now I can connect to the individual pieces. I can select one of these diffusers, and I click on the web service button here. This is the data that comes directly from the normal system. So this is not embedded in the Revit model or not embedded in the Navisworks uh, model. It's, it's only coming from the Kobe information data in, in uh, Monoma. Uh, or if 
I look at the uh, at this here, for example, this this chiller that we just looked at, and, and getting that information. If you have the author, if you're authorized, in other words, if you have uh, editing rights in in inside uh, the Numa system for this piece, uh, you can also go in and, and start modifying the data. For example, if I uh, want to uh, change the uh, nominal capacity for this filler, I can go and, and modify this to 170, and I can save it back to the Numa uh, system. So if I go now. Uh, and look at that type information here for this chiller. It should have that uh, value modified. Yeah, right. The nominal capacity is now 170 tons. Uh, so we, we have this live connection between uh, the Navis work file that is very easy and, and, uh, to navigate uh, and uh, uh, you can look at uh, window details, for example, and get the, the, the information about the window, the window type, the, uh, manufacturer, all of that. Uh, and I can change that uh, if I have uh, if I'm authorized to make modifications. I think that's uh, it for the for this round. Uh, you can play with this yourself. You can duplicate that scheme, or we can uh, even probably we should, probably should set up one scheme just with the medical dental building. Uh, so that people can duplicate it and, and uh, actually uh, play around with this uh, functionality. Right. Okay. Great. Thanks, Thomas. So the the point of this is that uh, we're using the same data that was in the Rabbit model, the Kobe files. Uh, the same data if if uh, Igor was to open it in Ecodomus as well. It could be looking at the same information from their side. So it's, we really want to emphasize again that you have different tools that owners want access at different levels of detail, both in 3D and also in the tabular data as well. And even how, how would you actually update it? So if this was going into operations and maintenance, what would you be doing with this type of information in uh, that scenario? Okay. Um, any questions uh, until we go? Yeah, uh, we have one question. When did Beck connect to the uh, NUMA model server? That happened uh, over the last month or so when we demonstrated it live at the uh, session right before the BIM forum in Tacoma. Uh, they actually went to the uh, directly from the model server, pulled down the BIM XML directly. It wasn't a live link to them. They had to grab the file from the server and then basically import it into Beck, and that would create the the model inside Beck uh, inside Deep Profiler that could then be used for further studies. So we're hoping to be able to show that there as well too. And somebody had another question about Navisworks, but I hit the wrong button and I deleted it. So if they want to retype their question, all right, <laughs> or, you, or you can unmute them if they want to talk. Um, well, Mike raised his hand. He is not on the phone. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I sent him the audio pin. Let's see if that works. Okay. If anybody else has questions or would like to speak, let me let us know, and we'll put we'll turn on the audio for you. Okay. Um, so I noticed that we have. Let's see who's online. Okay, here's the question. Does any other program interact with Navisworks like this? Yes, there's several that do, including Ecodomus. And I'm assuming... I don't, uh, huh? I don't know, I don't know uh, actually right now, of any other one where you can modify the data in the other application through Navisworks. I think that's, uh, uh, as far as I know, that's first. But it could be that, Navis, uh, that Ecodomus does it as well. Uh, Ecodomus has pretty strong integration of Navisworks and Revit into their product, so it could be, uh, I have not seen him doing that. Yet. Yeah, well, maybe we'll find out next week, but yeah, that's one of the main points here is that we're using web services, so Navisworks essentially is using web services to access the data from the Onuma server, and if the data was, it's almost like how we're connecting to Fusion, where it's just pulling data from the, the authoritative source, in this case it's the geometry of the Revit model, but the actual attributes coming in from the BIM server from Anuma. 
Okay. Um, let's see. Why don't you pass it back to me, and I'll show a few more things. And uh, Mike has.